Sometimes the desire to be lost again as long ago comes over me like a vapor. With growth into adulthood, responsibilities claimed me like so many heavy coats. I didn't choose them. I don't fault them, but it took time to reject them. Now in the spring I kneel. I put my face in the packets of violets, the dampness, the freshness, the sense of everness. Something is wrong, I know it, if I don't keep my attention on eternity. May I be the tiniest nail in the house of the universe, tiny but useful. May I stay forever in the stream. May I look down upon the wild flower and the bull thistle and all the flowers with greatest respect. These are the words of poet Mary Oliver. Isn't that first line just extraordinary? Sometimes the desire to be lost again as long ago comes over me like a vapor. I love that sentence. I don't know about you, but I thought the weather this spring was strange indeed. Well, really the weather from January with its six degrees below zero to a warm February. In fact, it was so warm in February that I had my Harley out for long rides. <laughs> yes, I do ride a Harley Davidson recreationally. Not a little Harley either, not that any Harley is really small, but I drive a big old hog. I ride to refresh and renew, but more on that later. Then after our warm February, we had winds and rains, and then it hit 90 degrees, and then 50 degrees, and then frost, and sometimes this was all in the same week. And humidity. Days in April and May were so damn humid, I swear, that we just missed spring altogether. When thinking about our flower communion today, I thought about how I really missed spring and all the seasons, and they have their purposes, and spring in particular is a time for us to refresh and renew. Just as the earth wakes and renews itself back to life with buds popping on the trees and bulbs pushing themselves up through the ground, the birds are busily building their nests and the frogs in our ponds are making their noises and laying all those eggs. But just as nature is renewing itself, I wonder, how do we renew in springtime? How do you renew? Nancy started her three-month sabbatical on Friday to do many, many good things. She's working on her book and she's attending a 10-day training conference and she's preaching, too, while she's out on the West Coast. I hope she is also taking the time to refresh and rejuvenate herself and spend time, as Mary Oliver writes, to put her face in the packets of violets, the dampness and the freshness and the sense of everness. You know, we all rejuvenate differently, and I hold no judgment on how you refresh yourself. But I really invite you to think about that question. How do you renew? Many people like to meditate. Maybe a sitting meditation or a walking meditation. Walking a labyrinth really works for some. Some people like to work in some kind of artistic medium. Painters and sketchers and potters and quilters and woodcrafters. There are musicians of all kinds and singers and chanters and songwriters. There are cooks and bakers and candlestick makers and so many ways that people can lose themselves even for a bit in a craft that uses their hands and fills their spirits. Or maybe you're a writer or a poet. Or maybe you like movies or plays. I often rejuvenate by going to a movie by myself. Maybe you're more into the sporting world and hiking or playing volleyball, swimming or golf is how you rejuvenate. Or maybe you reconnect to yourself from the responsibilities of adulthood and the many heavy coats that you wear by spending time with others, the people that you care about, friends and family. Or traveling and seeing new and different places refreshes you like it does me. I could list 
thousands of ways that people renew themselves, to feel the damp earth of themselves, to feed that feeling of getting lost again. How do you renew? And can you articulate it? Can you remember a time when you felt refreshed and that yourself could feel the gentle breeze of springtime and it brought you back to the oneness, the centeredness of who you really are? But wait, wait, Karin, you might be saying, you crazy lady you. I don't have time to do any of those things that you listed. I have kids and a job and a house and parents to care for. I have meetings and phone conferences and PTA committees and a partner who needs me. I have multiple, multiple schedules to keep and pets and doctor's appointments and bills to pay and really not one second of my day is free and I'm so busy that my mind is racing and sleep is as foreign to me as downtime. I hear you. And I understand. I hear so many parents talk about what their summer schedules are like and all the activity that the kids are involved in. And the calendar on the fridge is color-coded just so you can keep the schedules straight. Not only did we miss the gentleness of spring, maybe we don't have those lazy days of summer anymore either. Our bodies and our adrenaline can be hyped up and stay hyped up for so long that it can have adverse effects on us. It can be hard on our systems to stay in that high state of reactivity for so long that we don't give our bodies the chance to recalibrate itself, to let our inner waters settle and find out what is normal again. A friend of mine went hiking over Memorial Day weekend, and I asked him, did you feel refreshed and renewed when you were done? Well, no, Mike said. I had to hike 50 miles. I set that goal, and I pushed, and I pushed, and I made it. But I really didn't feel renewed after it all. Wow, I thought. You needed to come home just to recalibrate, just to reju rejuvenate yourself. And it can happen with our pets, too. I love animals, especially dogs, and there have been studies on dogs that love, just love to play ball. Maybe you know a dog like that. Some dogs will play fetch until your arm is weary and feels like it's going to fall off from throwing that ball. That dog will chase and chase and go and go, but what studies have shown is that if you never give your dog a day off, even from having fun, his system will never recalibrate. That adrenaline stays high in that level and the bloodstream can have adverse effects on the dog. Even your dog needs a Sabbath. <laughs> so let me spell out my point in all of this. How do you renew? And can you make the distinction if that activity is really restoring you or is it something that you need to do and then check it off your list, like the 50-mile hike? It can be a great goal to me, but not really very restorative. Have you heard of forest bathing? I heard of it recently, and I read an article by Dr. Lee, who is the author of Forest Bathing, How Trees Can Help You Find Health and Happiness. Dr. Lee writes, in Japan, we participate in something called forest bathing. Forest bathing means bathing in the forest atmosphere or taking in the forest through all of our senses. It's not exercise or hiking or jogging. It's simply being in nature, connecting with it through our senses of sight and hearing and taste and smell and touch. Forest bathing is like a bridge. By opening our senses, it bridges the gap between the natural world around us. So forest bathing is like being in nature without a plan. You just be rejuvenating, feeling the energy of the trees and the flowers and actually really noticing what is going on around you. You're not checking your phone or your GPS or even reading a book or doing anything. You're simply being in the woods or in your yard and just being. Maybe this is a way that you can renew your spirit. 
Not as easy as one would think. I tried it yesterday in a hard time well not doing something. But then I'm someone who likes to ride her Harley to refresh and renew. I like to just go for a ride. I feel present and engaged with what I'm doing. I so enjoy the motion of it and the wind and the fun of driving. I come home from a ride and feel relaxed and refreshed and centered. It's one of the things that I do to take care of myself. This summer, we have the chance to take care of ourselves and enjoy some new worship. We have several guest ministers, Alexa and myself, offering new voices and topics and styles of worship. I hope you will join us to rejuvenate and have new experiences in worship too. As I prepare to close us out and soon to invite Alexa to offer us the wonderful flower communion that she has prepared, I'd like to swing back to the people, myself included, whose life is just so darn jam-packed that it often doesn't offer any chance at all to refresh and renew. No chance for a river to flow through their soul, to soothe, to center, to restore. So I invite you to join me in a really simple and not very time-consuming exercise. If you're comfortable, would you please place your hand over your heart? Take a breath. Feel your hand as it moves up and down over your heart. Can you feel your heartbeat? Can you feel your chest and rib cage as they rise and then fall? Take a breath. And then another. Now take your other hand if you can, and place it on your abdomen. Take a deep breath, a deep one if you can, and feel your abdomen expand and contract. Deep and slow. And just breathe. Thank you. And I hope as you receive your flower and then offer a flower to another that you'll be able to smell it and to feel its touch on your cheek. And I wish you all a sense of everness. Amen.